Um, okay, like Adrian, I wasn't certain whether we were to talk about our own research or about our field in general. So I guess what I'll do is try and map my research onto the environmental humanities more generally. And where I felt there was a particularly useful connection to be made was in one of the readings we were given for this workshop, the piece by Ursula and, and Alison Carruth. Um, they make the point that there's been a shift in seeing nature as a, a kind of a, a pristine state that has been eroded to an understanding of nature as as, as turbulent and, and always changing. And whether in the light of that recognition we need to get away from um, the idea of nature in decline as, as something that kind of uh, undergirds everything we do and, and sort of where we go with that. So I guess I'm really interested in that question and the project that I'm working on right now is a kind of a cultural studies uh, analysis of the idea of resilience. So I'm interested in resilience in the way it's developed in, in ecological science. Um, I guess initially through the work of C.S. Halling in relation to the spruce budworm um, in uh, northern boreal forests. And so he really developed this idea uh, of ecosystems as not oriented um, or moving towards equilibrium, but defined by multi-scalar turbulence. And the, one of the big insights that comes from his work is the idea that ecosystem health works through instability, um, through diversity, which I guess is nothing new, but that the idea that turbulence is kind of constitutive of, of ecosystems. So that's the, the, a really simplified view of how it works in, in ecology, but it's also been taken up in a whole range of other areas. So uh, business, psychology, urban planning, risk management. And it's really become popularized and come increasingly to have a, this kind of normative element, like we all need to be resilient. And where my, my approach to the subject comes is from um, my initial research interests in, in post-colonialism. So I'm interested in the usefulness of resilience to a post-colonial ecology. And I've found that it's in some ways a really exciting and useful idea and in other ways um, more, more problematic, more disturbing. So resilience is a, obviously a very uh, kind of exciting idea to work with in relation to how we cope with upheaval and from a post-colonial perspective how humans and other species recover from, um, from ongoing and past trauma. Where it, it, it's more troubling is the link that more and more scholars are pointing out between resilience and, and neoliberalism. So the idea of turbulence as the norm and, and something that we don't just have to survive, but that we can kind of um, surf on, like use as, as an opportunity um, to, to benefit. And uh, of course those benefits are distributed very unequally. And one of the problems with resilience is that as a kind of a concept or a framework, it, it has no way to reckon with questions of, of justice, um, the sort of, um, I guess, what post-colonialism has been concerned with. So uh, histories of violence, um, ethical and political um, ways of, of reckoning with that violence. Um, I should just backtrack to say another one of the ways that resilience is an exciting idea is that it takes as a given that um, nature, that natural and social systems are, are intertwined. So that is, is a really useful idea, but that 
also comes with problems for the way that, um, like in the most simplistic ways that the term is used, um, uh, like unequal distribution, certain kinds of systemic violence, what, what Rob Nixon calls slow violence, again get naturalized into this idea of, of turbulence and a kind of a systems-based thinking that isn't really amenable to, um, to ethical or, or political ways of understanding things. So it seems to me that a humanities perspective on, on resilience is really necessary in order to um, kind of introduce some skepticism into the way the term has been so enthusiastically taken up um, and, and even into the way that it, it sees the social and the natural as, as intertwined without any concept of, of kind of mediation and, and politics. And I guess it's just sort of a side or one part of the project. I'm interested in the temporality of resilience thinking. So I've been working on um, the practice of scenario planning and how scenario planning as it's been taken up in industry, uh, environmental management, education, um, understands time and the future in a particular way that, that is defined by risk. And so how within that model do we understand history? Um, how does it uh, how does it take up, does it even take up at all the politics of, of knowledge, like from where are scenarios being constructed, how is the world being defined um, within that risk and, and resilience model. So that's it. <laughs>